It's Madden NFL 24, and it's presented by EA Sports. It's the Tennessee Titans and the New Orleans Saints. All that and more coming up next. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Superdome here in New Orleans. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the New Orleans Saints. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, the wait is over. The regular season is upon us. It is kickoff weekend around the NFL. Our two teams here getting in a final tune-up, but let's look ahead to the 2023 season. What are you going to be watching for? How about some of the recognizable new faces in new places? Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, Odell Beckham Jr. The identity of teams under new coaches in places like Houston, Carolina, and Denver. And then, of course, the rookies. After the draft, we want to see how they perform. Charles and I have been looking forward to this one all week, and we are underway from the Superdome. And from the end zone, here's Julius Chestnut, and the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. And the Titans ready to take over on offense for the first time, and it is the now 35-year-old Ryan Tannehill who leads him out in his 12th NFL campaign. Those who expected Ryan Tannehill to go quietly into the night after the Titans drafted Will Levis, well, they clearly don't know this man well at all. He's a fighter and former comeback player of the year and expects to have his best season yet as a pro in this campaign. Tannehill to the air right off the bat. Over the middle, he has a Okonkwo. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. That's a pickup of 11 and a first down on their first offensive play. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass catching abilities. And if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. Meanwhile, Tannehill's that's taken in by Okonkwo. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. The NFL's second leading rusher in 2022. Here's Derrick Henry, and he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. First down, Titans gain of 12. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. From the 46, here's second and a yard. Again, it's Henry. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Four yards, the pickup, first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. And he's got Rome. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. 47 yards rushing for him already. A terrific opening drive on the ground, and it's a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. 
I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. From the red zone now, Tannehill. It's complete to Hopkins. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they can be set up with a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Now it's Tannehill off the bootleg. That's complete right around the 8. And this carry brought to an end at the 8. Good stick skills, just not much room there to operate. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. And he's got it. That catch good for eight, but still, it's third and goal now. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. Well, he's talking about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Third and goal now, mere inches from Pater. Here's Tannehill. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Chigakakwo. There to make the grab. And the Titans get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. That was a really good opening drive on a number of fronts. Ten plays, very methodical, set the tone. So you know right now, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're on the sideline saying, okay, what do we have to dial up in order to get off the field a lot faster? Because both sides are out there for ten plays, but one side comes off energized, and the other side comes off with some questions. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here come the Saints to take over for the first time. And here's the new man under center after nine seasons as a Raider. Derek Carr is the guy. It's going to take some time to adjust to seeing Carr running out in a new uniform instead of black and silver. It's black and gold. 35,000 yards and over 200 touchdowns with the Raiders. The Saints more than willing to let him air it out all game long to a talented group of pass catchers in the Big Easy. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 22. A thousand yard rusher for the first time last year. This is Jamal Williams. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Now Carr. And incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now Carr. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? That their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot in the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? 
It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Now the Saints' third-round pick back in April. It's Kendra Miller. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From the 42-yard line, here's a second and eight. Carr going to throw. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. So no gain on the play. And third and eight now. now. They couldn't get anything going there out on the right side in the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. Here's a diving catch right side. He'll get 15 and a Saints first down. I felt that one all the way up here. How about that big man laying out and making that catch? Yeah, that wasn't a 180-pound wideout. That was a tight end. On first and ten, here's Carr. This is Miller, complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now a second and two. And they'll run it from the gun with Miller. Just a couple yards there down to the 17. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That was a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Here comes third in the length of the football. Now Carr on the bootleg. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down, maybe by about a yard, as they find a way to convert on third and inches. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. Williams going to get it again on second down. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Car now to throw. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And that drive was going pretty darn well. Three previous times, converted on third down. But on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. Out now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. 
So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Julius Chestnut now on the return. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Titans coming back onto the field for their second drive. yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five and that's exactly what you want on a first down run pick up five yards bring up second and five the defensive line though they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack second down they go again with Henry and he's able to take this one up to the 35 yard line six yards to pick up and that's a first down Another powerful run and another workhorse season in the books for Henry. Let's take a peek at his numbers. He's led the NFL in carries and top 1,500 yards for the third time in four years. In addition, fifth straight year with double-digit touchdowns. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. Buying time to his left. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Titans in possession of the football. Now second and three, as they've got it as we resume action. On second down, here's Henry. A strong running. <laughs> and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 66 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Tannehill on first down. That's caught by his tight end, Trevon Wesco. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Pull the gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. scrimmage that's it no gain there on the play and that's going to leave him with a fourth down he can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot and what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle the mike linebacker you're counting on your front three your front four if you're up five whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking allow you to roam and hit and that's what he did on that play and this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. 
And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Car now on first down. And this is going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Out of the pistol, here's Williams. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Throwing his car on third down. To the sideline and incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down. And he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is fielded at the 27. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And it'll be Titan football. Derrick Henry and the rest of the Titans offense about ready to roll again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They begin with Henry. Takes it to about the 37. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. So from the 37, here's a second and eight. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. This now a third and four. To throw is Tannehill. And that is incomplete. Certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with it. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. On uh, fourth down, Ryan Stonehouse on the punt. This is taken at about the 14. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The New Orleans offense back out and ready to go. A last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Carr going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10, at their own 20-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throw left side taken in by Miller. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Here's second and three. Up the middle, it's Williams.
the Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time they face a third and two. Throwing now is Carr. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. The car's throw complete there to Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. On first down, Carr. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. A shotgun handoff now to Miller. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Alave motioning to the left. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. He lost two and it brings up four. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Here comes the Saints punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 13. Now left side on the swing pass. No gain, and it's second down. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. 23 yards to pick up there. For a tight end, he's got good straight line speed. And on that route, he's often the guy that gets overlooked. Nice job there of finding him in stride for really good yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now it's Tannehill. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here's second and ten. Inside handoff, Henry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 87 yards on the ground now for Henry. He's got a first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. A handoff running left, Henry. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. 
Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Here's Tannehill now on second down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. Now Tannehill. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up four. Third and long, he knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Carr going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10 at the 20. And Shahid going to go in motion. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And that is not fooling anyone. He never had a chance to turn the corner there. And they'll go backwards right away. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. On second down, here's Carr. Pitch and catch to Moreau, the tight end. Here now a third down and eight. Carr. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Now a second and 10. Now Tannehill. And brought in downfield by Burks. And out across midfield down to the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. First and ten, Tannehill. 
and that's incomplete. No such risk in anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Second and 10. To the air again, Tannehill. That's caught left side, it's Burks. They get six, that'll leave them with third and four. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? Not like any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Third and four. Tannehill. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Titans first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Well, this might very well have been four down territory, but that's not going to matter now. They get a nice throw there on third down, and they're able to keep the drive going. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to throw, Tannehill. A short throw taken in by Conquo. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Second and five. Throwing again is Tannehill. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half. Unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well. Creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Here's Tannehill. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 13-yard line. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Folks' kick is good, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. Roughing the kicker, defense. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. On the return, here's Rashid Shaheed. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The Saints going to go on offense first, and they trail here as we begin quarter number three. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Saints going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. The opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. To throw his car. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. Oh, and they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Now a timeout here, at least for the moment. Looks like one of the Saints is injured, shaken up on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. between those last two plays. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around, they want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it, and they've run it well here to start the second half. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Carl try it again on second down. On a slant complete to Michael Thomas. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. It's a gain of 34. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. Here's Carr to throw. Throwing out right here, caught by Olave. Touchdown, Saints! Chris Olave from four yards out. And the Saints are an extra point away from evening this one up. The touchdown all set up by the big play one snap before, but they finish it off here with a shorter completion, this time for the score. And I like how they stuck with what got them there, right? The big pass play, got the momentum going, right? That's You create it with a play like that, and you come right back with another pass play to finalize things off. Extra point right down the middle, and we are even at 10 apiece. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Titans offense gears up for their first possession of the second half. 
Their halftime lead now evaporated. We're back to level following that touchdown a moment ago. And that shouldn't change the mindset a whole lot from an offensive perspective because they already knew this was going to be a hard-fought game. Now they just need to go out, execute their game plan, and keep moving. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 21. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. From the 21, it's second and 10. Tannehill now to throw. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Tannehill. I ah, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, the that's true. you got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And it's fielded at the 34. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And they will take over first and 10. The Saints offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. To throw, it's Carr. No, oh, and that is incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. They'll drop to throw. And that one going to come up short, low throw. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Throwing now is Carr. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First and 10, here's Carr. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Again, they'll throw with Carr. And incomplete on the deep ball. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. Card out of throw. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. 
Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. But Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. A first down carry for Henry. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Here's Tannehill. That's complete downfield to Okonkwo. Touchdown, Titans! Chigakonkwo, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Titans have taken the lead. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines, but the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Full connects on the extra point, and that makes it a 17-10 score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Saints coming out now to take the field. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Now it's Carr. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Now Carr. He'll find Miller, that's complete. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Carr going to throw. He throws and he hits the slam route to Thomas. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Fair catch called, it's taken in right at the 20 yard line. A 40 yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over.
Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 21. He'll start with a give to Henry. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over pursuing, and making a very nice play. Here's Tannehill now on second down. Looking for Hopkins, and he's got him on the crossing route. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 98 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? They keep it with Henry on first down. He'll get it up near midfield to the 49 before being taken down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. From just shy of midfield, here's second down and eight. Again, it's Henry. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. They'll try the right side with Henry. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down in the yard. A 20th carry now for Derrick Henry, and only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature in the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And Henry fighting for the marker, but I don't think he got there. He did not. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead them to fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the V feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short, and yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. They'll run. It's Henry. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. He's been tough for this defense to handle over 100 yards. You kind of knew that they were going to him on that play, didn't you? They certainly did. That's one of those situations where you simply say, my best runner over my best blockers, let's go ahead and pick it up. And I don't care if they know. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Cameron Jordan. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Certainly appears that Cam Jordan is still going strong as he puts the quarterback on the deck. Eight and a half sacks last year. Nearly top 20 all time in the NFL. And you certainly marvel at his durability. The one game he missed last season is the only one of his 12 year career missed due to injury. Tannehill's bats taken in by a Conquo. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense in every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. 
Third and eight. Back to throw, Tannehill. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. Folks, kick is good. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. Here's Carr. Fighting Johnson on the out route. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So stranger things have happened. A handoff, running left is Miller. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. One thing that's great about watching him run, Charles, he doesn't hesitate. He got to the left side of his own line and just went. So there's two ways to look at that. One, just absolutely unconcerned, just takes off and goes. But more the latter, I think, which is he has absolute confidence in the guys in front of him, the guys doing the blocking for him. He just takes it and goes with abandon. They keep it with Miller on first down. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll, in fact, tackle him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Now Carr. They set up the screen to Miller. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. And Shahid going to go in motion. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. And they try to catch him by surprise there on third down, but this defense, they were all over the jet sweep. And it's oftentimes all about what you're doing on the backside of the defense, whether it's the defensive end or the outside backer, who's setting the edge. And if they don't get blown off the line of scrimmage, they can really wreck a play. And in this case, they were able to make the tackle for a loss as a result. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will tighten this one up a bit. Now a one-score game at 20-13. to 13. All right, 
so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. And there's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. This game back within a touchdown now as the kickoff's away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. Start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. He'll get a yard. That's all as they get him down at the 28. Well, give him credit for trying, but there's no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stop the run and then execute it. Second and nine. They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. The Titans on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and seven. Now Tannehill. Steps away to his left. And Tannehill's got the first as he slides to a halt. Tannehill able to take off and pick up the first as well. Now that's a killer because you think you get it absolutely covered, and then he hot foots it out of there and picks up a first down. Drives you crazy as a defense. Looks like you're exactly right. Looked like a for sure stop on third, and then the tables turn. Result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. On second down, here's Henry. It'll be a gain of two on the play, but they'll remain a few inches short here with third down looming. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Here comes third and about a foot. Play action, it's Tannehill. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints' 27-yard line. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. They'll fake the handoff. Now Tannehill got his man, Akonkwo. Just a gain of a couple there, and that'll make it second down. Back to the ground now, it's Henry. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not gonna go anywhere. Time is called. Looks like a member of the Titans in some discomfort out there. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break.
On this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions, but they need seven yards here. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he does not get to the first down marker as they stop him at the 19. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. as he takes this one down to the 15. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. This offensive line starting to win up front. You win that battle in the trenches, you can kind of wear them down here late. So you bring in the second part to that equation, and that's the big running back, the big bruiser, who can get more than what's blocked and break a few extra tackles and gain yardage. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Running left, it's Henry. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? You just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. Here's Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. So here's Nick Folk in an important spot. This to make it a two-score game. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. They pass up the three, fake it, it doesn't work. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and ten at their own 13. They'll try and start this drive in the air. To the right side, complete to Miller. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Short completion, just four yards at its second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Finding Miller once more, complete. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It'll be a Saints first down on the pickup of 13. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. So first and 10 now from the 30 to throw his car. And his throw is incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield and man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. And they'll run it from the gun with Miller. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. 
Alave motioning to the left. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And down he goes, but the stiff arm utilized effectively there. And it helps him move the sticks. We ought to come up with a t-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Get his shoulder square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely. Picked his lane, went with it, and converted. Car now on first down. Oh, and a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. The Saints passing game in sync and move with the football. It's a first down. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in the game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Credit the sack there to Arden Key. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Here's second down. Now Carr throwing on second down. Over the middle, into the hands of Michael Thomas. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. A big play needed, no doubt. Third and long. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 32-yard line. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Throwing his car. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That completion helps out in a nice way. Now they can take a little bit more time, but guess what? They've got to make sure on their throws that they see it open, not just anticipate it. Here's second and a yard. Here's Carr. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Now Carr. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Partner, they've got one chance left to keep this one going, and I think for you and me, let's think along with their offensive coordinator now, has to think back, cycle through every play of this contest, and remember what's worked and what has it, because right here, he needs the best play of the game in order to keep this one alive. And he is going to have the Saints first down as they wind up getting four there on fourth and one. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked in the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. It gets this complete to Shaheed. the 18-yard line here, second and 10. Car to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Miller. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Now first and goal. Hey, let's make some good calls. Oh, man, 
Carr. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dive, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dive? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You have to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Now Carr. That's caught by Johnson. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute. And they're an extra point away from tying this game. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, gotta give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good, and we are tied here in the fourth quarter. So now, after the clutch field goal, he's back out there to boot it away in what's now a tie ball game. Chestnut now to return it. This taken in right around the goal line. Out come the Titans now. And Charles, obviously not much time left. I'm curious to see if there's enough for them to get into field goal range and try to win this thing. And part of you and I both know the save calls to kneel and just take it into overtime. But it's also very tough to pass up a chance to win it right now as well. But remember, if you do attempt that, it's got to be a big play downfield and still leave yourself enough time to get your field goal unit out there and kick for the win. They begin with Henry. And that won't help much. Only a yard on first down. blows and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor 60 minutes just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game So it's the Titans who will control the football first here in overtime as we're back underway. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He gets this one to Burks. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Tannehill. And this is in. 
incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Henry running right, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we seen a good running back get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry? I'd stay with him. And he's taken down here by the Saints. Ryan Bozzi fought in and got him down. Even the most elusive quarterbacks have those tough days where they can't avoid sacks, and this is one of them. Third time he's gone down. He might develop some happy feet now, want to escape the pocket and try and gain more yardage with his legs. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, on for a very important punt here in overtime. Great coverage there, holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points, and now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old-school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return, you can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. I'm sure that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Back to throw again. Slant pass complete to Alave. Five yards, now it's third and five. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. From the gun now on third down, Carr. And this defense definitely in his head there on third down, and he's pretty fortunate. They didn't call for grounding on this one. That was a good 10 feet over everyone's head. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds, and they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. 
So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Yeah, boy, the strength on display there as he rumbles through tacklers for a gain of about eight. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick a field goal to win it. But I tell you this, if I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands, critical situation, now's their time. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Third and two, Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Fielded at the 33. And nine yards there on the return following a punt of 47. The New Orleans offense set to take over. Well, this is a pretty rare situation here, Charles. You get in overtime, neither team coming through with even a field goal on their first drive. So now, sudden death with the time remaining. Next score wins. And now I would say that going at it might be a little bit easier for both teams now because they've eased into overtime. That first series, boy, everything on the line then. Now you've seen what a defense is throwing at you. You can make some adjustments, and all you need is three points to win it. They begin with a run by Miller. And some good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And it's second down. Shotgun now for Carr. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Carr. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Loss of 10 as multiple defenders get to him. I don't know if he was just working through progressions or just unaware of the pressure, but no matter. Excellent work by the defense to get him to the ground before he could escape the pocket. Here comes the Saints punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17 yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return and it'll be Titan football. Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. 
First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. He continues to be dominant running the football. I mean, keep feeding him, right? Yeah, you should because what he's put up already is really like a two-game total. Give him a lot of credit, but give the rest of the offense credit as well. The big guys up front and the receivers on the perimeter, everyone's getting involved blocking people downfield. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Zach Ball there on the tackle. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? You're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. And here in overtime, that had the potential to be the definition of a game-changing interception. But he couldn't find a way to pull it in. And that's a disappointment there. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Now Tannehill. That is caught. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Now it's Tannehill. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. So second down, still 10 yards to go, ball on the 43. Here's Tannehill. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Tannehill throwing again. This will go to Henry out wide. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Now a play fake. Carr. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Keeping the aggression going on defense in overtime here, a first down blitz. You know you can get burned on it big time if they pick it up, but in this situation, they brought the blitz, put some pressure on the QB, and he wasn't able to complete a pass downfield. Carl try it again on second down. This is Miller, complete. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do.
Here comes the Saints punter now as he's on to kick it away. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 40. They'll try and start this drive in the air. On the slant, DeAndre Hopkins. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Tannehill. That's caught. Nick Westbrook Akine with it. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. His first catch, and it's a big one in overtime. It's a first down. And, partner, they're locked in man coverage out left, and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. He's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. A first down carry for Henry, and a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now second and nine. Again, it's Henry. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. And yeah, the Saints signal for another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here in OT. So here now is the kicker, Nick Folk. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good. Time he's able to split the uprights, and the Titans are going to win the football game. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it 